So the next stage to modeling our dinosaur is to unwrap him so that we can paint him and bake our maps onto him. So if I go to the modeling panel, that takes us into edit mode. So this is a fairly dense mesh, and I would say if this was for a game, it would be too high in terms of the poly count. But because it's just for a render, so basically a still image, I don't really need to reduce it, and it can be handy to have that amount of polys when I'm posing it and putting it into position. But it does cause a slight problem when unwrapping. The easiest way, of course, is to do a smart UV project. So let's go to the UV editing tab, select all, and press U, smart UV project. I'll put the island margin up a couple, and press OK. Interestingly, it's got 88,000 faces, and I was aiming for 40, and I think I put that into Instant Mesh, but for some reason it's come out much more detailed. So I probably should have gone a bit lower, but I'll know that for next time. So let's look and see how well it's done. Let's go full screen, so Control Spacebar, and zoom in and see what we've got. We've got to watch out for any overlapping vertices, so it's a good idea to thoroughly check your mesh. And there we can see there's lots of overlapping vertices along here. The easy way to sort this out is to select one and then control plus and that will up the selection. And I'm going to go all the way across to the other side and separate these out. So once they're selected, what you need to do in order to cut them off from the other one is to go to this option here and disable sticky selection mode. Once you've disabled that, you still have the linked vertices here, so you have to press Control minus to go back one. Nothing happened there, but I did press Control minus, and then you can grab it, and then you can pull it away. And now it's in a separate location. It's really important not to have UVs that are overlapping each other. So again, this is probably too dense, this mesh, and it makes it a bit more awkward to see if there's any overlap. Sometimes you can just bake and see where the glitches are, but it's best to just go around and have a look and split them up. So I'm going around my mesh trying to find points that are overlapping, and in this instance I make a mistake, so I'm going to show you what mistake I made. And what you'll have noticed I did there was I forgot to deselect a section before moving another section, so watch out for that. Don't do the same thing that I did there. So I'm just going to go back and make sure it's all tidy. And for some reason I had one selected down here as well. So make sure you deselect everything with by double tapping A. In this case I'm going to go around and deselect it with circle select. Not quite sure what I did there, I'm sure I'll figure it out in a second. And then can we now grab this? Yes we can and move it into position. Hopefully nothing else has moved with it. So it can be a bit of a tedious process, but it's very important. And usually the Smart UV Project does a fairly good job. At this point I figured out that it needs to be shared location, not shared vertex. And so when I was selecting objects, they were selecting in different places. So I'm control plusing all the way up until I get to a spot that I think is good for a cut. Ideally you want as few as seams as possible, so you wouldn't want to overdo this. And it is really, it's better to mark your seams. But with such a dense mesh, that will take me a while. So shared location, not shared vertex, I think it was. And then you put it back to disabled when you want to select your vertices. So that seems to have done that. I'll save my work. Now it may be that you'll get a glitch when you're baking. And then you may have to look back at this and see where that is but I think I've got most of them. It just means you have to quickly redo your bakes. And now I'm ready for baking. So once your dinosaur is unwrapped, it's time to bake out the textures. So I'm going to pull a new window down from here and I'll change this to the shader editor. I already have a video on baking out cavity maps, normal maps and ambient occlusion maps. So this will just be a quick reminder. So I'll set up my new texture in the texture panel. I'll start with the normal maps. I'll set them to 2048 by 2048. I'll get rid of the alpha and I'll click OK. Then I need to make sure that that is in my shader editor. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, bring that in. I don't have to hook it up. And Dino Normals. I can also 
set it to non-color data now. I'll come over to my render tab and go into cycles and under the bake panel, I'll tick bake for multi-res. And unfortunately at the moment, it can only do normals and displacement. So I'll set it to normals and press bake. Now at first, this is very difficult to see the changes because they're fairly minor details on our model. If I come out of edit mode and now go into my UV map, you may not even be able to see this on YouTube, but you can see the map has actually baked. So make sure you save your map. Also, it's worth pointing out that GPU doesn't work particularly well for the baking. I haven't found it works well for me anyway. Maybe it's uh, that they haven't got all GPUs supported or something like that uh, with this version of Blender at the moment. If you are having any glitches as well, then it's a good idea to change it over to CPU. So for the next bake, we actually need a copy of our model. So I will duplicate my dinosaur and I'll call this the high poly version. And just for ease sake, I will bring down all the details on my original. That shouldn't affect it and we can actually apply this now, but I'm leaving it there just in case. It's nice to know that I've got that detail there in case I want to go to it later on. If this was a game model, you certainly would get rid of the multi-res. So I've got a high poly and a low poly. So I always select the high poly first, then the low poly, and I need to set up some textures. So let's create a new one for the cavity. Press OK, and I'll just duplicate this one with Shift D, and I'll change it to Dino Cavity. And what I haven't done is set up the texture for the high poly, so I'll go back to the high poly now. I'll give him a new texture, or new material I should say, and this is gonna be HP for high poly. And I'll bring in the geometry texture. So add input geometry and use the pointiness. And that's gonna be for our cavity. That's going to go into a color ramp. So shift A, convert to color ramp. Like I say, I've done all this before on another video. So if you need more detail, look at that one. Blacks I'll bring to 0.4 and the whites I'll bring to 0.6. And let's have a look what that looks like. So I'll hide my low poly for the moment and just head across to render mode. And we can just see the detail coming out there. So in the crevices, it's darker and in the highlights, it's lighter. And see if I can't adapt this really slightly. And you might be tempted to go this far, but you can see the creases are getting slightly distorted. It's not too bad though. So maybe around 0.45 and see what that looks like. And bring in the whites as well. And just bring them closer and closer until you don't get any of that distortion that we saw just earlier. What we're trying to avoid is where it's completely black. We've lost all information then. And that's what you don't want. You kind of lose information if you get those sort of bits. So I am actually going to go down to 0.465. And that should be okay. There's just a little bit and that should be fine. A little bit in the belly button as well. If I need to, I can actually paint those out, but I probably won't need to. Let's just test a bit more with the whites. You can't go past 0.5 basically with either of these. So whites that way and blacks that way, obviously. So you're getting close to 0.5, and I think that looks great. That's just what I need, and I can use a color ramp to boost it or reduce it if I need to. So we're ready to bake. So with my Dino HP selected, and then I can bring back my remesh and select that second, and that should bring us up our original material. I'm going to call this Dino, and we're trying to go to the cavity, so make sure that's selected, and it should appear in here. If you want to double check that, you can press tab to go into edit mode and it should say dino cavity and it should all be fine. So let's go back to the baking cycles. And this time we can't bake from multi-res. We have to go selected to active down at the bottom here. Let's change position. <laughs> we shouldn't need a cage. They should be very close to each other, but we can just turn the ray distance up just a touch, maybe 0.1, just to make sure that it covers everything and I need to change it to diffuse because it's actually using the color information. We don't need the direct and indirect lighting, it's just the color. And then we should be able to press bake and it crashes. Okay, so I had a slight glitch there where it crashed and it could be just because I'm using too many faces. I did turn my multi-res up to three and it gave it about six million. It should be fine, it should work, but occasionally get crashes. I might have to bring the multi-res down a bit 
or I may have to just make sure it's all applied. I'll try once more. So to solve the problem that I was having, I took my dyno high poly and I just reduced the faces of it. So it's one and a half million now and that worked for the bake. So it's just a bit too high res. It's not making much difference to my output. I have to zoom right in to see any real difference and actually that's the pixel resolution and not the detail of my mesh. So it does make you wonder in some ways whether it's worth going to a really high detailed mesh with your sculpt in terms of baking out. It's quite useful if you're painting textures on to see a nice resolution of your texture, but in actual fact your baking out for colors isn't that important. So lastly, the ambient occlusion, which I may or may not use. It's something that's nice to have, but you don't always need to use it. I'll unhook this one, and I'm in my high poly at the moment, so my dyno high poly, and I'm going to add the ambient occlusion. So input ambient occlusion, and I'll just add that in and see what that looks like. And you can see it's adding a lot to the cavities. So it may be useful. It is just useful to have these maps just to aid your painting. So I'll create a new map again. I'll come out of render mode. Come to find maps, create dyno ambient occlusion or AO. Turn off the alpha, press OK. And then to bring it in, I'll just duplicate one of these. Shift D, change it to the ambient occlusion. And remember, none of these are plugged in yet. They're just a guide for Blender to know which one it's baking to. So whichever one it's selected, it should be. Select my high poly, low poly last, and I'm doing exactly the same type of bake. Hopefully we won't have a crash again. Better save it the first this time. For some reason, this bake can take an awful long time. So I'll see you in a second. Unfortunately, I've hit another glitch. <laughs> it could be my fault. Uh, it could be the ray distance, this one. So if you really want an ambient occlusion bake, uh, you might have to turn the ray distance up. I'll do some experimentation with that. So I've tried a couple of times with the ambient occlusion and it's not working for me. So I'm going to just ignore that one. It's one that I rarely use anyway for painting, but it can be nice if you can get it to work. Maybe someone knows what I did wrong and they can advise me. So in the next episode, I'll be hooking these up and painting my dinosaur.